I remember junior high and going into high school, uh, Napoleon Kaufman was it for me. That was just like, <laughs> you know, instant excitement right there. You know, I just would watch this dude, and no matter what he was doing, whether it was a kickoff return, whatever, you just always watched him because you never knew when he would break something. And just, you know, watching him, he'd score that touchdown and lift up, show the six pack, or, you know, run somebody over and just flex the arms. And, and I mean, it was just pure excitement for me. And it was dudes like that that really just lured me to the game. And when it really came down to it, I was heavily recruited. But when it came down to signing a contract, uh, putting a scholarship behind me, a lot of schools shied away. And so for me, it was kind of like, you know, if I couldn't, you know, go to a USC, I'd build one. So. Uh, it was just uh, a necessity for me. I was not going to come and be a part of, you know, a, a tradition of losing. It just it never was in me. They look at you, oh, he's just going to be a third down back. Um, but for some of the numbers I put up, one being scoring, I mean, you got to be in the game in the red zone. You got to be in there in money time, uh, third and shorts, and so, uh, you know, as well as first downs. I mean, that's really a testament to making plays and making things happen when it really counts. And uh, so I, I think. Uh, records like that speak real big on my behalf. Last year, I probably ran outside more than any other year. My first couple years, it was all inside, you know, and I, especially, you know, coming in, I mean, I was 175 pounds, and so for me to have 290 carries and, you know, the bulk of that coming, you know, in between them guards, so I think people have to look at that. You know, you could still point at it and say, oh, he's this, he's that, but you have to look at what I do and how I do it. It goes back down to that heart and to realize this is a mental game more than anything. And if you keep falling off the cliff, that's what we call it, it's suicide. The more you keep wanting to run out of bounds and fall off the cliff, man, people know, I mean, he don't want to take a hit. He's scared of me. So next time they see you coming up the middle, that's what they think. I'm a bust this dude because he don't want to get hit. But if you on the sideline and they realize, man, this dude could run out of bounds and I'm coming back into them, they realize, all right, all right, we got a battle. You know what I'm saying? And so when I come through the middle, they ready for me because they feel like, okay, well, if he hit me on the sideline, he gonna hit me in the middle. And then that's when I do this thing on them. And then they come and just to blast me and they focus it straight ahead. And that's when I can make you miss. Because you don't realize when I'm gonna come hit you, when I'm gonna try to make you miss. And you know, they lose either way. If I get them on their heels where they're breaking down ready for contact and I run straight through their chest, nobody wants to see this little 5'8 dude running through their chest. So they have to keep focus on hitting me, and that gives me kind of leeway to keep them off balance. So, I mean, it's a mental thing. It's a, it's a, it's a tactical thing as well. People will look at you, man, you can't do it. And so that was kind of the tough thing. I mean, plus the ladies love it. I mean, to see a little man out there with these big dudes dominating, you know, I mean, it, it had to be like, ooh, I can't believe you could do that. So it was just a young man's pride, just trying to get in with the big boys. I don't know, growing up, it's kind of like, that's it. It's where your heart's at. You know, where's your heart? The, the man will be made from his heart. What's in his heart? And uh, that's what a lot of people don't realize it. You know, when you, when you see a lot of trash talking, and there's a very small window that separates athletes, and it's not done athletically. Athletically, it's really hard to distinguish one great athlete from the next. It's really gonna come down to what's in, what's in each man's heart, you know? How easily can I get to your heart and break you down? And so I realize I'm built from the heart up, and you know, uh, I like that. It just really kind of spoke for how I see myself, you know, all heart. I don't have, I'm not the fastest, I'm not the biggest, I'm not the strongest, I'm not the best athlete, but I'm all heart. And there's where you're not going to beat me, you know what I'm saying? You're not going to outwork me, you're not going to hustle me, it's all heart. And when it come down to me against you, hungry man going to eat, and you know, and I'm going to be well fed. <laughs> you go to school and certain kids know about Shakespeare and certain kids do this and do that, and it's kind of like, you know, I was always the kind, whether I liked it or not, I always, you know, I'm, I'm obviously very opinionated. So I always kind of want to feel what's going on. You know, I don't like being left out of the loop. And so coming here, I realized that, you know, it was here. <laughs> you know, I have an opportunity to really just kind of branch out. All the things that I never really got a chance to see, to read, to hear about, to witness. It's like, man, I'm here. What else am I going to do? I might as well do it because if I don't do it now, you know, I may never get the opportunity again. I may never be open enough to try it again. So I just decided, you know, for the last year or so, you know, ballet, let's try it. You know, Shakespeare, let's go see it. And just, they paying for it, so why not? When you look at my numbers and break down what we have done, you know, as a running unit, how can you do that without them, you know? So for me to get all this respect, all American status, is kind of like, man, you know, where's my line? Where, you know, where's their respect, you know? We're working on it. Man, they're really putting the pressure on, you know. I came here above all things to get that Rose Bowl ring. And, uh, you know, it used to just be an in-house Pac-10 thing, and now it's a national champion. So they're really putting the pressure on. But 
what are we here for? You know, if we're not here to win it all, if we're not here to get, you know, the crown of all crowns, which is the Rose Bowl. So um, what's life without a little pressure? You know, that's fun. That's what you work for. So uh, I'm still after it. Well, if it's up to me, you can expect us to play like our hair on fire. Because that's the only way I know. Everybody coming. We're not, we're not surprising nobody. We're not a sleeper. You know, people are now looking at us, expecting us to do things. We're opening up our first game on ESPN. Man, that's big time. You know, I come from, you know, when I got here, I remember looking at that list of, you know, the 110, 111, whatever Division I schools, and we were like 98, 103. It was, you know, it was ridiculous. And to open up my senior year live on ESPN, it's like, man, everybody's coming. So all, I, all you can really expect from this team is all you can expect from any champ. We're going to give everything we got. You know, I could stand losing. If we just go out and get beat, I could deal with that. Um, but we're going to go out with pride. We're going to go out and just play hard. And, and that's all I can ask from my squad, you know, because if we do that, I know we win.